Hi everybody, Boon Dr. John here. Today we are looking at the Victron GX line and going through the setup, user functions that may be important to you, and a little bit of the troubleshooting. This particular device is a Servo GX with a touch screen 50 hooked up to it. A uh, little easier to manipulate through all of the settings on this. This is my trailer. We are hooked up today at a RV park to 30 amp power. I've got the current limiter set to make sure that I don't exceed that and trip the breaker. So just a quick rundown of the screen. The upper left is the input current. The upper middle is the inverter. The AC loads in this particular case is the two 15,000 BTU Dometic air conditioners that are currently running. And then below that we have the PV charger, which is the solar input. The DC power in the middle on the bottom is something that is just an algorithm and it's not typically accurate, so don't pay too much attention to that. And then on the far left we have the battery bank, and this is a Tesla battery bank, so the voltage is a little different. We've got three different screens. One, two, three. All of the GX devices have three of them. The Servo is the easiest to monitor through because of the touch screen capability. Uh, touch it once brings up the menu and this is the first menu. Things that most people will do on a regular basis. So the inverter is assisting. This is a Quattro on my system. It could be a Multi Plus 3000. It would be the same. Uh, on the top we'll have the switch. Uh, you can have it on charger inverter only uh, i'm going to cancel out of this after you pick these it'll go but sometimes you have to hit the check mark be cognizant of that or else your new setting may not take effect so right now we're assisting oops uh, input current limit is set at 30. i can go off here and i can change it up to whatever i want if i go higher than 30 i will probably trip the breaker at the shore pedestal uh, probably rather quickly depends on what I set it at I'm going to cancel out of here but if you want to set yours to whatever you need to hit the check marks or else it will not take effect so I'll cancel out of that and while we're in here let's look at uh, your AC in and your AC out so this is where you know that the inverter is transferring electricity through on the transfer switch. So this may be important to look at if you're having issues. So we'll be able to dial in through the charge controllers or the battery monitor as well, drill down into it, but it's easier through the applications, but you could do it here. If you're having issues, the notifications, this is where they're gonna show up. Uh, that's not the case for me. So now we go into the settings. The most important thing people are going to want to do as soon as they get a brand new GX device or if they're having issues is to get online. So we'll go to the Wi-Fi and then we'll look at Wi-Fi networks. So my network is here. I can, uh, I can hook it up to mine if I choose to. So, capital sensitive. That's my password, so let's go ahead and connect to it. The internet here is really bad. It may not actually get me an IP address. While it's doing this, we can scroll down and it's retrieving. It is connected. I've got a MAC address. I've got an IP. At this point we know the system's online. It will take some time for the data dump to happen onto the VRM server if it's already connected. And if you're looking for someone like me, a Victron specialist, to help you with your system, this could take a half an hour and it could take, you know, four hours before everything is online and and able to see all of the data going backwards. So just be cognizant of that time frame. So now let's go ahead and pretend you're having a new system. Let's go into the VRM portal. 
this is your portal ID. After you set up an account with VRM, then you can add this to your account. If you're having an issue getting it online, I would probably look at getting rid of the use secure connection momentarily. Uh, make sure the two-way communication is blue here. And then that's it for the VRM online portal. After it is online, the next thing to do with a brand new system is to go up and, and upgrade the firmware. Fairly simplistic. After you get it updated, I would not let it do online updates all by itself. If it's working and everything's fine, stop the updates and leave it alone until you have an issue or something new feature is, is worthwhile of updating the firmware. Uh, after that, the date and time, if you can figure that out, remote console. So uh, you're going to want to disable the password check and that didn't do it. So you have to touch it again and you'll see a pop-up window come up. So the password check has been disabled, but we still need to reboot it in order for that change to have an effect on the system. Also make sure that uh, your VRM is enabled at blue. That should be there as well. And then we can back out of that. Uh, I don't think there's any other functions in here. Yeah, we already talked about that one. If you want to, if you're using Wi-Fi and you're going to leave this alone, you could actually reboot device with no contact after you click this and make it blue. It'll give you the ability to change the time frame of it being offline from an hour to 24 hours offline. Then it will reboot and it will try to join up with the Wi-Fi again. Okay, let's talk about the input current limiter. This is my trailer still at the RV park accepting 30 amp from the RV pedestal and the two Dometic AC air conditioners are the load so the inverter is adding more than what it's accepting from shore power. Let's see how that works. Uh, mine inverter is a Quattro. Yours could be the Multi Plus. Once we go in, we see that the input current limiter is set to 30 amps and it is assisting. So I'm using more than 30 amps, but I'm only accepting 30 amps so that I don't trip the input breaker. So if I was going to plug into 50 amp RV power, I would just change that to 30 to 50. Uh, to do so, you just touch it again. And that will bring up the positive and negative to adjust the current that you're accepting. So once you get it switched to 50 where you want it, it's critical to remember that the settings will not take effect unless you hit that lower right check mark. If you have a 5500 watt generator that is producing everything on one leg, you'd want to go to about 42 amps. I found that to be reliable close to sea level. As you go higher in altitude, the inefficiency of you know your generator not being able to breathe like us, uh, you will have reduced output of the generator. But 42 is a nice place to start. If it's tripping, if it's struggling, drop that down a little. So another common situation is uh, if you plug into a 15 amp outlet and you can bring this right down to 15. Of course, don't forget to hit the check mark so that it'll take effect. Now this is where it gets a little tricky. If you've got a short cord in between your RV and the outlet, you may be fine at 15 amp. But if you put a 25 or a 50 or a 100 foot cord, you're going to have to dial that 15 amp down. Now the reason for this is that the inverter will get voltage sag with a longer cord from the house or wherever the power comes in from. So if the voltage at the inverter ever gets below, I think it's 108 volts, it will no longer be qualified by the Victron inverter and it will just disengage all of the shore generator input when that happens. So 
you may have to dial this down you may have to play it by ear depends on you know, the voltage at the RV park the sag this could be affecting you at 30 amp 50 amp with a generator higher altitudes this is something that you're just going to have to figure out as you go to be honest so a quick little recap if you're at an RV park you can use the exact current for what the breaker is stated for that you plug into that would be acceptable everything else you may want to play with it a little bit or play on the safe side whichever you feel more comfortable with hopefully this video answered most of your questions if not i do offer consulting uh, go ahead and reach out to me on my website boondoctor.com have a great day and stay unplugged